Hey there, and welcome to uh, Gail Tales Hangout. Uh, my name is Zach Farmer, I'm class of 08, and today we're going to be chatting with uh, Hal Bearclaw. He's one of the relievers for the Miami Marlins. He St. Mary's grad of class of 2012. And um, thanks a lot, Hal, for getting a chance to, uh, to talk with us, chat with us for a bit. And I'm um, just going to talk about the your experience over the last the past year. Um, it's almost we're getting close to your year anniversary of getting up to the show. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been kind of a whirlwind, you know, getting traded was a, a big curveball in life there. But then obviously, you know, still striving for the same things to get to the big leagues, whether it's with the, you know, Cardinals who originally drafted me or the Marlins now. Um, but it's been a great experience. I've met a lot of cool people, you know, and got to go to a lot of cool places, a lot of different cities that I probably would have never been able to go to without this opportunity. So it's been fun. And talk about that transition um, between uh, the end of last season, you had a couple months up there in the majors, and then kind of what the experience has been like this year. What differences have you noticed in um, the way you've kind of gone about things or um, the experiences you've had from year one to year two? Um, just the comfort level. I mean, you, you obviously get more, you know, being with the Cardinals and then getting traded, you just kind of have to meet everyone all over again. So from, you know, last year, everything happening so fast, you know, I got to meet the guys for a couple months and then come back to familiar faces and, you know, get more comfortable, you know, build on those relationships and, and, you know, be more comfortable in the clubhouse and with the team and stuff like that and with different guys, you know, and building those relationships. And I think that's the biggest difference is that, you know, I now know everyone and, and can interact with everyone a lot more and you become more comfortable. And obviously that makes everything else a lot easier. You know, you can ask questions from more experienced people and, you know, you learn how the, you know, the different ways of the game and stuff like that. And you try and take different things from other people that have been around the block a few times. And on, on that note, like there's also been a few new faces in the clubhouse as well for you, new managers, some new coaches and, te- and, it, and you guys have also kind of like hit the ground running this season. You guys are in, in the hunt to get a postseason spot this year. And, and what the vibe has been like uh, this year, now that you've kind of gotten a little bit more comfortable and kind of meshing with some of the new guys in the clubhouse. Um, it's been more exciting, you know, obviously, you know, when you're in the race and you're trying to make the playoffs, it's the games, all the games are a lot more important and they're more exciting. And, you know, I think that our clubhouse is very loose and laid back, like to have a lot of fun, you know, which obviously helps you stay loose on the field, and you know, perform a lot better. So I think that's a big thing. And then with the new manager, I mean, this is my first time up here, so it hasn't been that big of a transition, you know, when you get in the minors and you get moved up, you have different managers and stuff like that. And it's just kind of part of the game, you know, now that, you know, to have Don Mattingly as, as your manager is obviously a blessing. You know, the guy's been, he's done everything from A to Z in the game of baseball. And so it's, it's good to have someone with that kind of experience and to be able to draw, you know, his, from his experiences as well, you know, talking to him and, and getting to know him. It's, it's been a great experience. And then with the team and obviously all that stuff, it's been really great. And how much now coming back to uh, St. Mary's, like how much were you able to kind of see uh, their run into the postseason this year? And first time they've ever been able to get to the tournament. And how, how did you were able to talk to some of the guys either before or after and kind of to kind of pick the rainbow what that experience was like for them and how proud you've kind of you probably are to see kind of the program grow like it has. I mean, I've definitely been very, very excited for them. I, I haven't really interacted with a lot, any of them, you know, I'm out of town a lot in the off season. Mm-hmm. I don't get to get up to St. Mary's very much anymore. Um, I am going to try next year to get to that, uh, the banquet dinner before the season, you know, this year, just the, with all the travel and everything that I had to go into in the off season for the Marlins, I wasn't able to make it this year, but next year, that's something I'm going to throw on the calendar, you know, and it's, it's awesome to see that the program's growing, you know, and coach Valenzuela has been doing a great job. You know, he's really turned the program into kind of obviously a winning program in the two, three years that he's been there. And, you know, that's good to see the quick turnaround. And obviously, you know, from when I was there, you know, it always seemed like we had a little bit of talent and we always, you know, we're right on the cusp and he's kind of taken the program over that, you know, into a new plateau. And now, you know, obviously now it's just a matter of doing it all year in and year out. And it seems like, you know, talking to some of the guys that got to, that I went with to St. Mary's that played under him, that, you know, they all liked him. They all, you know, respected what he had to do and and showed, you know, and obviously it's shown on the field with what they were able to do this year. 
And what sort of impact did, uh, did uh, St. Mary's have on you off the field? And um, kind of how have you been able to apply to some of that into your professional life? Um, I think it just, you know, obviously a lot of the, it's, it's still a job what I do. And a lot of what I took from St. Mary's is how to interact with people and, you know, technically your, your, your coworkers, you know, are the, are my teammates or the manager, you know, is your superior, you know, your superior, you know, so it just teaches you how to work within a company basically. And, you know, it's, it's not that much different as a, as a baseball player, you, you know, you still have to interact with different people, different personalities, people from different areas. Right. Um, so a lot of personal skills, you know, interaction skills help me. And then being a business major, you know, that obviously helped too. You realize the different things and, all the different things that need to come together to make it, you know, an organization or a company work that you kind of just have a better feel for everything. And now kind of talking about that transition from the college game to the pro from the mi to the minors and then to the major, like what, what were the, what was the biggest challenge and what were some of the biggest changes you had to make to be able to adjust to that life? Um, I think just being, a, you know, you have to learn to take care of things on your own as opposed to, you know, in college, a lot of it's, you know, mapped out for you, you know, you have scheduled workouts, you have, you know, meetings with the team and stuff like that. Whereas here it's, you know, you have, you have to do everything on your own. There's not going to be someone holding your hand and saying, Hey, you got to get in the gym or you got to do your conditioning or you got to practice this or that, you know, it's a lot more self run. And that's what I think the biggest difference was. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, and one of the, and obviously one of the cool things you've been able to do in the last actually few days was be there in, at Fort Bragg, and it's kind of about that experience of being able to kind of play. I know you didn't get into that game, but it's just the experience of being in that environment and being able to connect with um, with the men and women who serve our country. I mean, that was pretty incredible. I mean, everything from you know, I've never been on a military base before, so just being on the base in general was a exciting experience for me but then to you know be able to play the game and do that for the troops and kind of give back to what they do for our country and and stuff like that it was incredible just to be there and then to have a baseball game and you know you see all the people that came out you know and just the atmosphere around the ballpark was incredible and it was a lot of fun and then we got to do some stuff in the morning with the troops you know and go out and talk to some of them and see what they do and you know it it, it it's very humbling you know we're you know i'm living a pretty nice life and you know it's all because of them and so to give back to them and be able to you know hear what they have to go through it, it makes you you know appreciate what i have what was some of how what how much different was it like once the game started the feeling in that in the building as opposed to when you're either in miami or in a visiting stadium what was the kind of the what was the most um, striking thing the different difference that you heard that you saw i mean for me it was just the fact that they built the whole field from scratch, I think, in, you know, a couple months. I don't, I don't remember the exact, I think they said about 90 to 100 days, they, they cleared out the land, built the field and put everything up. And the, this, the fact that, you know, it just was like all well done, you know, in such a short period of time was, was mind blowing that they could do that. And then, you know, the field was in really good shape and the bullpens and the mounds and, and the stands and everything, it was just like, wow, you guys put all this together really, really fast. And, you know, then you have everyone there that's excited to be there, you know, people that may not get to see a lot of sporting events, you know, so that everyone's excited about everything that's going on. So I think that was the biggest thing was just like how well put together and how well, you know, it was, it, it worked out. Mm -hmm. And now being a Bay Area kid, you have a couple of guys who have some strong Bay Area ties now in the clubhouse. Um, um, Tom, I'm talking about like being in the clubhouse with someone like a Barry Bonds or, or an Ichiro, some of these all time great players and how you've been able to kind of your relationship with them. I obviously they're on their hitters and you're a pitcher, but still kind of what to like kind of having those sort of guys in the clubhouse. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's a lot like, you know, what I said with Don Mattingly, you know, these guys are people that have done everything in the game, you know, from Barry Bonds to Ichiro, like, and Ichiro's, you know, obviously very cultured been been through everything you know coming over from japan and just watching the way that they go about their business especially each row you know because he's still playing like you know watching the way he goes about his business and how seriously he takes 
every little part of his routine and how every day it's the same thing. And I mean, that's one thing that, you know, that's talked a lot about experienced guys is that, you know, you have to have a routine. You have to have something to make sure that you're pretty much on the same page every day, you know, and ready to play and watching the way he goes about his business and, and does everything the same way every day. And he's the same guy, whether he went 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, he's the same guy in the clubhouse. And, you know, he's fun to be around and a good teammate. And I think that's the biggest thing that I take away from him. You know, as a pitcher, obviously, you know, I just like watching what he does. And I think it's incredible. And, you know, that's something that I've been very fortunate in my early career, you know, to play with a guy that's going to be a Hall of Famer, you know, to watch and just, you know, he leads by example. You know, he's not very vocal in the clubhouse, but, you know, he leads by example with the way he goes about his business. And what has, how has your routine um, changed from, say, college to pros? Like, how, in what ways, like, what has been, become your routine on, on a game day? Uh, and does it change whether it's day game or night game? Um, I try and keep everything the same. I mean, I usually get to the field if it's a seven o'clock game, get to the field around one, one thirty, you know, have some food and then kind of get into, you know, working out and doing my arm care. And then the pitchers throw at three o'clock. And then whether you're home or away, you have a couple hours in between the throwing, you know, before batting practice, you know, and then you go through all that and you just kind of stay on the same page, you know, doing everything the same. You know, I know baseball players are notorious for being superstitious, but it's more of just the consistency of everything. And then in terms of a day game, I try and do all the same stuff, but it's kind of condensed and packed into a little shorter period of time because we don't take batting practice and I don't have as much time before the game, you know, um, because I still get there early in the morning. But, you know, you try and do the same thing every day to try and stay consistent, you know, and there's a lot of different things, you know, obviously – with the travel that we do and stuff like that, it's hard to, to, to stick with it, but you know, you do it as much as best you can. And how have you been able to kind of balance that, uh, the, the personal life come with your professional life? Obviously you talk about a lot of that travel and that kind of plays into it and kind of how have you found, started to find, um, that balance of what you're able to do, um, uh, personally while still obviously taking care of everything professionally. I mean, you just, you try and be responsible. I mean, especially as, you know, a sports figure, you know, you see all these things that pop up. You just kind of, you know, stay low key. For me, I'm not a big, you know, I like to just go about my business, go to the field, you know, after the game, go home, you know, wake up and do it all over again. And, you know, I spend a lot of time in the off season visiting, you know, friends and family and stuff like that. When people come into town to watch me, you know, most of them know, like, this, I, this is my job. I have to, you know, be ready for my job. I can't just be waking up, you know, really early in the morning, spending all day before I have to be at the field doing stuff and then, you know, be exhausted for the game. You know, they understand like, hey, I can get breakfast with you in the morning and then I can get dinner with you after the game. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on for the most part. You know, every once in a while, you know, you go out and have some drinks or meet up with some friends and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, it's your job. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough, you know, I have an off season where I have three or four months to where I can go and do pretty much, you know, visit people or spend time with family and friends at home or stuff like that. So I kind of save all the personal life for, you know, when I'm not in season. Mm -hmm. And um, what, like going back to uh, uh, Sam Rage, like what is, what was kind of like your favorite uh, moment that you probably could and actually share uh, on air um, from from your college days, uh, whether it was um, one of your classes or in the dorms or on a road trip, what was kind of a few memories that stick, stuck out to you? Um, I think just living freshman year in the dorms, I lived in Midi and, you know, the after that, I never had a, a roommate that stayed in the room. Um, I just had, um, you know, a single, but living in those freshman dorms makes you appreciate having your own room. <laughs> But the relationships that I built and, you know, living in the freshman year and all, the, you know, my teammate, freshman teammates were pretty much in the same hall. So growing up, you know, having that year of just building those relationships, I mean, and all the memories that we have from that year and even, you know, all four years, really. But that year, like everyone kind of being in the same building all the time, you know, I think those were the, you know, some of the best memories for me. 
All right, great. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, thanks a lot, Kyle, for uh, getting a chance to, to chat with us for a bit about um, what you're doing now and everything that you're doing. And uh, Kyle will be playing playing today. They're in New York against the Mets, uh, seven ten Eastern Eastern time start. Um, and then for us here, Gale Tales will be doing a Snapchat takeover with actually another St. Mary's. Uh, Great Tom Candiotti, and he'll show us around AT&T Park as the Diamondbacks get ready to take on the Giants. Um, once again, uh, thanks a lot, Kyle, for getting a chance to talk to us, and uh, good luck today. Awesome. Thank you very much.